actually use broccoli sprouts. And in today's video, I want to show you because there's, there's this really interesting uh, study that I came across just um, actually pretty recently that showed how to triple um, sulforaphane content in broccoli sprouts. And the reason why is actually so um, important to incorporate broccoli sprouts to your daily life is because of sulforaphane. Okay, so we've got quite an audience that we build up. So why don't I just um, get started with the demo? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to triple sulforaphane content in these little tiny innocent uh, broccoli sprouts. So broccoli sprouts is the sprout before broccoli becomes goes into full full uh, vegetable, right? And some of you might have seen it in supermarkets, some of you might have grown them, some of you might have not seen them at all. So, you know, whatever um, is your experience with broccoli sprouts, this video is, is for everyone. So don't worry about that. I'm not gonna be showing today on how to make broccoli sprouts. I'm gonna make that into another video another time. I just wanna address the sulforaphane content per se. So uh, what's so, you know, while we are waiting, because we need to uh, put them in hot water and then wait for 10 minutes. So when we're doing that, I'm going to tell you what's amazing about sulforaphane, but just a little prelude is that it's a super important substance, useful estrogen dominance. It's, it reduces and shrinks breast cancers in women, estrogen receptor positive, really powerful stuff. So all you need is just uh, broccoli sprouts. And I got mine from the supermarket because I just have not had the time to grow them. Oftentimes I do grow them. Um, all you have to do is just place them in a container and always remember to use glass because we're going to be pouring hot water onto them and you do not want to be using um, hot or warm water with plastic. Uh, a lot of BPAs, BPFs, BPSs that are hiding in plastic, even in a BPA-free plastic. A lot of things I have learned, but one of them is that, you know, we remove plas plastic that has BPA on it. Turns out the P B BPS and BPF are two far more toxic substances that I found in a lot of plastic. So, you know, instead of chasing the mouse, right, just go, go with glass. You just can't go wrong with, with glass. So the next thing we're going to do is basically the study has shown that if we bring the temperature up to 70 uh, centigrade and that's 158 Fahrenheit, and cover it for 10 minutes, then the sulforaphane content is gonna triple, it's actually more than a 3.5 times higher availability of sulforaphane. So if you do have a temp thermometer, then you can play around with it and figure out what's 158 Fahrenheit. When I, I'm a sort of a practical girl, so um, I've already got it figured out for you guys and the recipe is coming out on Sunday, we are launching it. So basically, if you don't have a thermometer, what you can do is use three quarter of a cup um, of cold water, right? So, or just room temperature water. And then the rest of it, we're basically gonna be using hot water, which is gonna be three, three cups and a quarter. So you end up basically three, and then, and then I've got a quarter. Can you see I'm also using, I'm also using metal, um, metal measuring cups and not plastic. I do have plastic ones, which I use when I use cold, with like flowers and stuff like that. Okay, so all we have to do now, let me just give it a bit of a, a stir. And these lovely broccoli sprouts, all we have to do right now, leave them in this temperature. So we are talking about 158 Fahrenheit um, for 10 minutes. I'm not gonna leave them for entire 10 minutes just for the purpose of a demo today. But basically that's what the study shows uh, to do. So really simple uh, thing to do. So let's talk a little bit about What's so special about sulforaphane? You know, sulforaphane is a chemical substance that is found um, actually in all the cruciferous vegetables, right? So I hope you guys are eating cruciferous vegetables. I, I teach so much about them all the time. People with thyroid are afraid of them. Please don't be. I wrote a whole article about it. Gene, if we can post that article about thyroid and uh, cruciferous vegetables, nothing to be feared. Uh, it's big misconception, misinformation really, disservice that's done to people with thyroid conditions. Uh, cruciferous vegetables would be things like kale, collard greens, um, all the mustard greens, right? Um, arugula, which is my personal favorite, all the radishes, uh, bok choy, cauliflower, uh, of course, broccoli, and broccoli sprouts. Now, sulforaphane is available pretty much all of them. The, what we are finding is that 
per gram, um, there is between 17 to 30 times more sulforaphane in these little tiny broccoli sprouts. So I'm not saying don't eat broccoli. You should be eating broccoli because there's a lot of other amazing things. In fact, cruciferous vegetables are, uh, have the highest density of nutrients as compared, for example, to things like lettuce or um, uh, you know, uh, cucumbers or zucchinis, which are like on the lower side in terms of nutritional density. So the cool thing about, um, so that's, that's about broccoli sprouts. The high 30, imagine just up to 30 times more of sulfur effect. One, it has, it shows to, it shows us that it helps to, um, helps us to detoxify us from a dirty estrogens. For those of you who follow me for a while, you know I'm big on estrogen dominance. In case you're not familiar, this is the first time you're listening to this, or maybe you, somebody tagged you, and you just, this is all seems very new to you. Estrogen dominance is a, it's a hormonal imbalance that is most often associated with symptoms such as terrible PMSs, infertility, um, mid-cycle spotting, not getting your period, or your period goes on for a very, very long time, like some women getting 30 days of periods. It could be fibroids, endometriosis, estrogen receptor positive breast cancers. Um, are also estrogen, as the name implies, right? Estrogen receptor positive. So the receptor for estrogen, that's what makes the profilation of, of the uh, cancer cells. Um, ovarian cancers, uterine cancers are oftentimes due to that estrogenic condition. So a lot of times we think that it is, um, it is a good idea to stop eating everything that has got estrogen in it. And that's actually not correct. What we want to do is incorporate foods that are helping us to metabolize the estrogens into what I call clean and dirty estrogens. And guess what? Sulforaphane is one of those very potent uh, chemical compounds that help us clean up our estrogens in a positive way. Uh, the article that we're going to be publishing on Sunday so if you're not on our mailing list, by the way, um, you can just join us. It's on hormonesbalance.com. There's a thing like a bar on top. You just pop your name in there. And um, every week we issue uh, newsletters with information like this and new recipes and stuff like that. So one of the things that I'm going to talk about on Sunday in the um, article that I just wrote is the study um, that sh the studies that I'm citing there. You know, sulforaphane is able to kill the stem cells of a cancer cell. And it's just so incredible. Can you just imagine that? Killing cancer, stem cells of a cancer cell. And, you know, for those of you who know somebody who has breast cancer, had breast cancer, or you yourself, maybe that's you, tamoxifen, tamoxifen is the um, allopathic oncology way of dealing with things. The problem with things like tamoxifen is that, you know, it does a lot of other damage to us, including liver. That's why women are put on tamoxifen for no longer than five years because of the liver damage that it does, where things like, you know, uh, broccoli sprouts, they just don't do that. So, um, so this is, um, so we should be, I'm probably going to talk for a couple of more minutes and, and then we'll strain them and I'll show you how to store them. But we're also going to, I'm going to make a quick um, drink. So it's not, I will be honest with you, it's not the most, the best tasting green drink that I've ever made. <laughs> but you know what? If you're dealing with serious estrogen dominance issues, like all the symptoms I described, especially if it's fibroids, endometriosis, you've got breast cancer, or lumpy boobs, fibrocystic breast also. That's one of my things is that I have all the genetic markers for being a perfect candidate for uh, breast cancer. And that runs in my family on my mom's side as well. And part of it is that I'm a super slow estrogen metabolizer. But, you know, as you probably know, genes are not a destiny. And there's a lot of things that we can do to change that. So um, that's why things like uh, broccoli sprouts, I incorporate them to, to my life about two, three times a day. And I'll put them into smoothies. One thing before I forget to mention, sulforaphane, in order to be activated, um, is actually in an inactive form until you chew on it or masticate it, right? So mastication can happen through putting that into your Vitamix or the smoothie I'm gonna show you. It's not a smoothie, it's more like a drink today. I'm gonna show you how to make um, that also. But also, but if you're putting that, you can put that into salads and soups, it's perfectly fine. Just make sure that you take your time and don't just swallow the food quickly, but take your time and chew the food. Uh, one of the practices that I, was thought when I was in um, was a meditation center in India 
they ask us to chew at least a hundred times before you swallow. And that was part of the meditation process. Uh, I know most of us can't do it. I can't do it anymore today. But, you know, if you can do 25 times chewing before you swallow, that's already good enough. And that also gives you an ability to, um, to slow it down, but also release a lot of the gastric acid and the saliva, which contains amylase. And that's what breaks down carbohydrates anyway. So um, before I, I strain it and show you what to do with it next, let me just take a quick look. Jean, post the questions in Skype so that I can take a quick look. Um, Oh, okay. So Jean is our team member. She seems to be having connection problems. So that might be a bit of a challenge. Let me see what I'm... Um, okay. Um, so one of the common questions we get is, what about do we, you know, can I use any other sprouts, right? Like, for example, red clover or alfalfa, right? Are some of the common sprouts you can get in the supermarket. And the answer is that uh, you can, they all have their own properties. And I'm going to be covering red clover even more. Um, I'm going through an herbal clinical herbalism program right now. And one of the things they're big on is red clover. Um, and it's, uh, but it's for different purposes, right? Uh, they don't contain sulforaphane. So if you're specifically looking for sulforaphane, then we have, then this is what we want to be using. Okay. So let's, take a look at, you know, they haven't really changed all that much, to be perfectly honest. I mean, they are just, um, let me just pull out some, let me get my thongs. They are just a little bit more tender, as you can probably see, right? So, you know, a bit, they're slightly softer, but we definitely don't want to be keeping them any longer than what I already have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain them. Now, one of, the, one of the ways of maintaining freshness of broccoli sprouts is to make sure that you get as much of the liquid out of them as possible. And so for storing purposes, before I make the, uh, the little recipe I want to show you today, I just want to show you in terms of storage, what I like to do is just using, be using a simple container putting paper down at the bottom, right? Transferring these guys right in here and then do another layer of paper towel so that the more moisture, you get the idea, right? And then put another layer. Basically, the more moisture the paper absorbs, the more, the fresher they're gonna stay. And that way you can keep them in the fridge for like up to five to seven days, okay? So this is how I would store my broccoli sprouts. All right, so, Lastly, what I want to show you today is how to make a quick sprout drink. And we don't want to be juicing it. You want to have the whole vegetable in, okay? So this is really important. So one of the quick ways of dealing with uh, broccoli sprouts is basically, of course, you can put them into your smoothies and things like that. Um, actually, let me talk about the amounts. So in oncology, in um, Functional oncology, functional meaning, you know, what doctors look at the underlying causes of what brought on the cancer in the first place, right? Allopathic medicine just goes down to destroying the cancer cells, not asking the question, why did it happen in the first place? Let's create a terrain where the cancer doesn't thrive. So, so functional oncology looks on the underlying causes and um, detoxification, things like that. So um, what we're going to do is... You know, in order to add a little bit of flavor to it, because they're pretty green, <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of. Actually, I forgot to zest it first. So let, let me zest it first. Actually, before you cut the lemon, zest it first. Who wants to tell me why I'm zesting the lemon and what's so good about um, the skin of the lemon? For those of you who've taken our programs, you would know. And by the way, um, Jean, if you're still hearing me. If you can post the cookingforbalance.com URL. Hey guys, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you think this is really fascinating, then you know we have uh, an online cooking program called Cooking for Balance where I show things like that, tricks and tips on how to use food medicinally like this to get the most out of it um, for, to, to balance your hormones. And 
you get to access the whole program over eight days. Every day you get a module to watch. Um, and then you can join the full program or not. Okay, so I was asked today first. So who wants to tell me why I'm zesting my lemons? If for those of you who who know, if you've taken the program, you know, if you've got my cookbook, you know this. You should know this. And the answer is because it contains the limonene, which is a huge liver detoxifier. I also forgot to mention that sulforaphane contains a glycophate and they will also be helping you with liver detoxification. So it's not just for cancer prevention. So it's not just an anti-carcinogen. It's not just um, to help manage estrogen dominance symptoms, right? And clean and, and skew the balance to clean estrogens versus the dirty estrogens. But it's also phenomenal at helping us detoxify our liver. Another beautiful benefit. Uh, there was one of the studies that I posted was about how women have ex been experiencing shrinkage of uh, breast cancers. So yeah, I forgot to um, put my, let me see if I can reach with my microphone over to this other side of the kitchen. Yes, I can. Okay, I'm gonna use, be using my favorite, which is Nutribullet. Just a nice quick drink. Andrea is asking if this, she doesn't have time to watch this right now. Yes, we're going to be keeping this, Andrea, on our Facebook page. So you can go back anytime and watch it. Absolutely. So that's it. Um, that's basically your drink. Let me just give it a bit of a taste. Mm. You know, I mean, it's an acquired taste. I will, I will be honest with you. Uh, one of the things about broccoli sprouts is that they are full of sulfur too, like all the cruciferous vegetables, right? So it's, an inquiry, it's not disgusting by any means, but it does have a very greenish sort of uh, chlorophyll -y, if you will, taste. But that's why putting the lemon in has really helped. The other thing I will do, I'm just kind of totally improvising here today, is I would add a dash of salt, maybe even two, which is also great for the adrenals. And, and then give it another swirl just one more time, just to tell you whether that was worth doing. <laughs> All right. Do you guys love your Nutribullet? Mm. Yeah, it's definitely better. Um, it somehow takes away that sulfury uh, taste, so it doesn't dominate. Okay, so that's it. I mean, how long did it take us to, to show you this? I mean, seriously, like I took, and this is all me talking, right? So this has been 20 minutes. Without this, it's probably 15 minutes, takes you probably five minutes when you do it on your own. Three and a half times more sulforaphane in this beautiful, innocent broccoli sprout, something that, um, let me talk, talk, talk about medicinal um, amounts actually to take. If you haven't asked that question, I'm not able to look at the questions right now. Um, so the amount is if you, for, for, in the functional uh, oncology, for women who are currently undergoing um, treatments of breast, for breast cancer, the recommended amount is a cup a day, right? And you want to have it in whatever form you like, just as long as you chew on it. And if I were you, I will definitely optimize it the way we have done it with the hot water. Um, if you are in a preventative mode, you do half a cup a day, meaning if you have a history, a fibrocystic breast or breast cancer, ovarian, uterine cancer, doing half a cup a day um, in this method will, will do. Uh, for someone like me who's never had a history but have a high predisposition, I make it a point to do broccoli sprouts at least two, three times a week in all my smoothies, salads, and um, soups, and you know, however, however I can do it. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Whatever questions you have, just post them, and what I'm gonna do then once we finish the transmission, I'll go over and answer them um, later over the weekend. All right, everybody, I hope this was helpful. Have a lovely weekend. Hope I, I hope you try it. Bye for now.